How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 9. Fitting the studs for the main bearing top caps, making some cylinder gaskets and painting the box bed. And don't worry, there isn't as much painting in this episode as there was in the last one. In fact, at this moment in time, there is no painting whatsoever. And that's because I'm fitting the studs that hold down the bearing top caps to the sole plate casting. Even though fitting studs is a very simple job, I've seen so many bad examples of how to fit studs. Rule 1. Do not use a pair of pliers. The best way to fit studs is to use a pair of lock nuts and lock the nuts very tightly together and then use the top nut to tighten the stud into the hole. And once the stud is tight, release the lock nuts and that's it, the first stud is fitted. Obviously, do not over tighten the stud into the hole for two reasons. One is you may shear the stud which would not be good, you really don't want that. Alternatively, you could strip the thread in the casting, and that's not a good thing to do either. A Stuart Models 5A steam engine is not really a model steam engine at all, it's a small, full-size steam engine. And this small engine is capable of delivering 1.5 horsepower, and it needs a good steam supply of £80 per square inch to do this. A Stuart 5A with a suitable boiler is easily capable of powering a steam launch up to and maybe slightly beyond 20 feet in length. I mean, it's not really going to be a speedboat and I don't think it's going to be suitable for towing a water skier, but that's not the point. It seems to me that sailing down the river in a small steamboat would be a very pleasurable experience and I've never done it. I've sailed plenty of model ones but I've never been in a full-size one. I'll make a note of this in my Things I Haven't Done list and there are plenty of those. The response I got to the last video was quite interesting. It really made me smile. I thought what I'll do is I'll do the normal sort of steam video showing you how to do things and then I'll put an extra long painting section at the back end with some music of my own composition that is really designed to make you feel good and very, very relaxed. But unfortunately, most of the audience fell asleep and some viewers even wrote in to tell me that they went into a comma. Now that's a really strange thing to do. I think it must be either just bad spelling or predictive text. But really, if you think about it, the word should be coma, going to a coma, C-O-M-A. And the only thing I can say about going into a comma is it's far better than going into a full stop. That's an original gag, an original joke, a one-off. Unfortunately, in these videos, some of the operations are fairly tedious and boring. This is not exactly thrilling. And sometimes when I'm editing these videos, I'm in danger of falling into a comma as well, as long as it's not a colon or a semicolon. Do you see what I mean? There are so many ways to make double entendres by accident in these videos, and I really don't do it on purpose. Well, I think I did that one on purpose to illustrate the point, but I don't do it on purpose. I don't like to be too vulgar in my Steam videos, so there'll be no references to dribbling cocks in this video, other than the references that I've just made, if you see what I mean. Now for the first time you can start to see what this engine is going to look like. I've fitted a pair of 21st century steam oilers which are very nice things and it's time now to make some gaskets. The only gasket I have is really flimsy and a bit damaged and it's not really good for making a pattern so what I'm going to do is stick this flimsy broken gasket onto a piece of gasket material and then cut it out and use that as a template to make the proper gasket. I've coated one side of the old gasket in superglue or cyanoacrylate adhesive and what I'm doing here is smoothing it out and I'm going to turn it over and stick it to the new piece of gasket material and once the glue's set and everything's solid I will cut it out and use it as a template to make a proper gasket. I've now turned the gasket over and in order to hold it to the new piece of gasket material I'm putting a metal disc on it. Once the cyanoacrylate adhesive had fully set I cut out the centre part of the gasket using a scalpel. A word of warning with these scalpels, you must wear eye protection when using them for this job. They're really not designed to do this, and if you put too much pressure on them, the blade will shatter and it pings across the workshop, and if it pings into your eye, then I think it's fairly serious. In this clip I'm using my Minicraft drill with a small drum sander fitted to clean up the edges of the cutout so the gasket fits accurately. The next job is very simple, I just use a hole punch to punch the holes. And not unsurprisingly, the gasket fits the engine, mainly because the thin damaged part was the original gasket for the engine. So now I remove it 
and a drawer around it, and this gives me a pattern to make a proper gasket, but this new gasket won't have a damaged gasket stuck to it. And in this clip, I'm fitting it all together. First I fit the gasket that I made, then I clean it up around the edge with a piece of sandpaper, so now I have a really good fitting gasket. But unfortunately, when I try it on the top of the engine, it's nowhere near. So I have to clean off the cylinder, removing all the old gasket material, and I need to make a gasket for this one. An easy way to make a gasket for a cylinder like this one is to just use an ink pad. Here's the ink pad, and all you do is press the cylinder into the ink pad and pick up lots of ink, and then you press the cylinder onto the gasket material and it transfers an image. The image isn't perfect, but there's usually enough information there to allow you to make a gasket. And I would like to thank the viewer who told me about this in the first place because it's something I never did. And it's a very quick and convenient way to make a gasket that's a good fit on the cylinder. Caution, caution, painting alert. But you can relax, it's not much painting and it's at a very high speed, so it won't take long. If you remember, I used the stuff called JB Weld to skin the casting and fill some of the irregularities. And it's a success, it looks good. And in the last part of the video, I'm painting the flywheel and I'm painting it red and I really don't like it in the slightest. Red flywheels look really good on mammoth steam engines, but for me that's about it. I don't think they look good on larger steam engines. Maybe a 10V would be okay, but nothing much larger than that. Certainly not a 5A. So anyway, I'm unpainting this because I don't like it at all. And you will notice that it's taking longer to unpaint it than it did to paint it. I think I need to buy a new unpainting brush. I think this one's getting a bit tired and worn out. It seemed to take quite a long time to remove the red paint with this brush, but as you can see, it's slowly disappearing. And, miraculously, it goes back into the tin. Anyway, I'm glad to see the end of the red paint. I will paint it green. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.